And he wrote about seeing these Jews, uh, things like this. An army of employees were dashing to and fro, giving out orders. And in the midst of all this, a gang of young women of dubious appearance, Jews like all the rest of them, hanging around in the offices with lecherous demeanor and suggestive smiles. Throughout it, he calls them pale, dirty, drugged eyes, vulgar, repulsive, with faces that are intelligent and sly. Stereotypical anti-Semitic contempt, as you call it. Yes. Did this run through his whole life? Did he view Jews like that? Uh, no, it's the only evidence I've found of that kind of um, um, moral and physical uh, disdain for Jewish people. But um, people will take this in different ways. I've been told by um, prominent Catholic journalists that um, my interpretation of this as anti-Semitic is bizarre. Um, I have to say that the um, the immediate parallel I found with this kind of language is actually in Mein Kampf, talking of the same group of people and during the same period of time, between 1919 and 1920. Um, we have absolutely no doubt when um, we teach in history class um, and, and refer to Mein Kampf as a text that this is, uh, this is uh, typical of, um, of anti-Semitic um, attitudes. Well, when we come back, we'll further investigate the silence of Pope Pius XII during the Holocaust, so stick around. Now, Eugenio Pacelli becomes Pope on the eve of World War II. He's essentially spent much of the last decade negotiating this concorda with Nazi Germany throughout the 30s. And people know by the early 40s what Hitler's up to. And yet throughout the war, Pope Pius XII never speaks out against the Nazis about the killing of the Jews, the Gypsies, the Poles. Why was he silent? Well, it's interesting that uh, the view of Pius XII, the common view before my book, is that he was the silent pope and that this was the great scandal. Um, in fact, it's a pity he wasn't completely silent because uh, the fact is that he did speak out. He spoke out at Christmas 1942 and this was after six months of um, systematic um, uh, information coming into the Vatican uh, about the true extent of the final solution. I mean, in July 1942, for example, um, it was published in uh, the Daily Telegraph in London and the New York Times that millions of Jews were going to their deaths. All these details were known. And it's known too that uh, diplomats inside the Vatican um, were supplying him with whole dossiers on, um, of information. And um, in the autumn of 1942, President Roosevelt actually sent an envoy through enemy territory, a man called Myron Taylor, to plead with him to, to speak out. So finally he speaks, um, Christmas 1942, and what does he say? Instead of telling the true figures, the millions that were going to their deaths, he scales it down to hundreds of thousands. He doesn't mention the word Jews. In it's fact, he says here, I shall, I shall read it, he says in this, what became known as his most clear denunciation, he says, humanity owes this vow to those hundreds of thousands who without any fault of their own, sometimes only by reason of their nationality or race, are marked down for death or gradual extinction. That's right. And this That's all advice, he said throughout the war. That, that is the fullest extent of um, all his statements during the war. And um, it is clear to me that that is... Um, it is a statement. He's saying something. He's not being silent. But the statement is um, tantamount to being a denial of the truth and certainly a trivialization of the true horror of, of the final um, solution. Um, in this sense, what he said was deeply scandalous and particularly scandalous to all those German Catholics who might have been moved by what he said, instead of which um, their consciences were placated and lulled. Peter Gumpel again says, in my considered opinion, a public protest by the Pope 
would not have saved a single Jewish life. It would have only aggravated the persecution of both the Jews and the Catholics. It was a strategy, therefore, a considered strategy of this pope to remain totally silent throughout the war. Again, is that disingenuous? I think it's disingenuous because it should have been explained to us after the war that this is what he was doing. What, what did he say in 1946 before a group of Arabs visiting the um, Vatican? He boasted that he had spoken out clearly against the Nazis for their treatment of the Jews when we know that that was simply not true. So he lied? Uh, well, what we certainly know is that he took credit for things he didn't do, which means that he's a hypocrite as well. Why is he being beatified then? Well, the process of beatification and canonization, the making of saints, has become, during the uh, reign of this pope, um, extremely political. We're talking about John Paul now. We're talking about John Paul II. What would be the politics behind the beatification of Pius XII? It would be surely that um, his policies of extreme centralization, um, his policies of um, absolutism, uh, his conduct during the war would be um, exonerated, not only exonerated, but actually confirmed. Knowing about this, and you're a Catholic, does this shake your faith? Does this change your attitudes as a Catholic towards the institution of the Catholic Church? Well, I don't regard myself as a particularly good Catholic. I go to church. Um, but, you know, there have been bad popes in the past, and there will be bad popes in the future. And what we're learning from, I hope, one of the lessons that I've certainly carried away from my journey through the life and career of Pius XII, is that, um, you know, the Catholic Church is not the Pope. Um, the Catholic Church is to be found in all the people of God and not just consented in this one man. Now, John Cornwell's book, Hitler's Pope, is a well-researched and a thorough chronicle of the shameful, the deceitful acts of a pope who has, up to this point, been very well protected by church apologists. Now, the first half of the book is a bit dense. It focuses on church history before Pacelli's reign as pope. But this second half of Cornwell's book is nothing short of a harrowing read. Now, it obviously gave Cornwell no pleasure to expose the Pope Pius XII as a moral failure and as an anti-Semite, but to his credit, he does it without backing away. I would put this book on your must-read list. This is history at its best, investigative, explosive, and finally revelatory. It's published by Viking. I'm Evan Solomon, and I'll see you again in seven.